Okay. Um, so yeah, my name is Steve Cole, and I've um, I've been working on a board game insert. So first of all, thank you to Bamboo for putting together a fantastic contest uh, for the board gaming community. Um, it was the motivation I needed to start um, to start taking some ideas I'd had around doing some board game inserts and and some board games and things like that, and uh, actually making them a reality. Uh, and so thanks Bamboo for that. Uh, also thanks to my friend Andrew who's behind the camera. He, um, he kindly allowed me to hijack our board game design session this morning to uh, spend a little time to record this video. So, so thank you Andrew. So I'm basically just going to show Andrew. Uh, he may have questions. So you, you'll hear his voice as well. Say hi Andrew. Hey guys. Uh, and uh, uh, we should check. Are we getting audio? We are getting audio, yeah? Yeah. I it would be a disaster it. if we weren't. Yeah. <laughs> cool. There's a nice pleth there on the audio. Uh, Fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to, he may have questions. I'm just going to basically show my buddy Andrew this insert and you're going to be along for the ride and uh, we'll go from there. This is kind of the before shot because this is a copy of the game that sadly, um, maybe many of you might, <laughs> any of you who have this game, a lot of you would recognize this. This is kind of Believe it or not, this is well organized because at least the baggies are labeled and there's you know separate baggies for separate things. What I don't like about this is that it is friction. It is it means there's additional setup time to get it to the table. And I don't know about you, but for me, um, if there's friction to get something a, a game going or something, often that's just enough for for the for the game not to happen. Okay, how do I get this thing? to the table, onto the table, out of the box, in a setup state, how do we get playing quickly? And for the purposes of running a campaign game of Descent 2nd Edition, how do I then save my gain state in such a way that I can very quickly restore it, get back to the table, and that kind of thing. Uh, so with no further ado, here is what I ended up with. We get the box laid off, we get the manuals out, and we've got this so these are the, this is the one component I didn't design uh, fully myself. I adapted it from a design by Sand Mammoth. Uh, there'll be a link to his original design in, in the comments. Um, but thank you to Sand, this, this is not technically part of the insert. Um, everything below this is the insert that I designed. I, I did modify this heavily so that it fits perfectly inside the box. One of the great things about this is that if you feel overwhelmed by the idea of doing a design fully on your own, you can, there's lots of stuff out there with very permissive licensing terms, like, like these boards, which have a CC by uh, license. What that means essentially is that as long as I give attribution to the original creator, I'm allowed to um, make copies of this, modify it. It doesn't matter if it's for commercial purposes or for any purpose. Um, it's a very nice permissive license that, that lets me take this and adapt it to my own purposes which is what I've done. So, Andrew, here's your player board. Oh, thank you. Uh, the idea with this is you want to get the player boards out to your players as quickly as possible so they can begin setting up uh, their individual boards. Everything that the player needs uh, to set up their, their player is in here. So, <laughs> I gave you the wrong one. Uh, see if you got anything in there. Hey! Yeah. Um, those aren't the correct cards, but you get the idea. Um, some of the changes I made, uh, I chopped the end off of this here so that um, there's, there's a lot of cards in, in Descent that um, you need to exhaust. So I made it so that you can easily turn that and, and exhaust that. And there's no, there's no side blocking you from doing that here. Same with this side, just gives you a bit of extra space if you want to have more cards up here and have a bit of room to uh, exhaust things. But beyond that, I mostly, I cleaned up the interior quite a bit. Um, I made it so that there's a nice little uh, tab here, which allows you to, to get at uh, the, the stack of cards here, but also to, to more easily pop off the, the card. Uh, the other thing I really was, was considering was, um, with these components was, what are components that only are needed at setup time that, that can be uh, used to set up the game and then put back in the box later, but essentially get it out of the way, get it off the table, keep only the things on the table that you need for the gameplay itself. Uh, this is where you put all of your um, hero cards. Once the players have chosen their heroes, you no longer need this, so this goes back in the box lid. Same with this. Uh, this is the player minis, so you would distribute minis to your players, let them choose their minis. Uh, and then the Overlord um, ha has their deck here. Uh, the other deck is for the market, essentially, which is where the Overlord, through the course of the campaign, will be purchasing uh, more cards through experience points. So that kind of keeps those two decks separate, but then this goes back in the box because we don't need it anymore. 
Um, the way I designed this insert was it is it is only for the core box, but I actually thought about all the expansions that come after this. What I don't like a lot of the time when trying to 3D print an insert is you have to decide between do I do I want to print the whole full meal deal insert that fits the entire collection because someday I may own all of it and I, I want to be able to, to have room for it. Uh, that takes time, it's expensive, and, and it's kind of useless until you, you actually have all that stuff. Or do you want to print the core because that's what I have, but then basically it, I might need to kind of replace it later once I feel like I've got more of the collection and it's not really working for me. What I did with this insert is I, I, I measured things and I compared them to the uh, boxes for the expansions, which, are, which tend to be smaller, and I essentially have an upgrade path where the components that are in this box uh, can be reconfigured with the expansion boxes so that you need to you need to print additional things but largely you get to reuse just about everything that's in here and it grows with you. This essentially goes with the Overlord player. Uh, you can see that it's got unused slots that is to support additional future content uh, and so this this is every kind of token that would hit that, that needs to be put onto the map. You know, this tray has conditions like poison, stun, that kind of thing. It's got your, your damage and your fatigue markers. Uh, and then these are the last two uh, token trays. So, I've, so the way I designed these was to be fully configurable. Uh, you know, you can print as many of these as you want. If you want to have easily accessible uh, damage or fatigue or frequently used tokens and have them around the table, you know, you could, you could spread these out around the table and use these additional uh, trays however you want. And as, again, as you add expansions, you can add more dividers and get more of the other tokens in there. Uh, let's go to the mini storage. I designed this so that the monster deck actually slides in here. This, this becomes kind of your one spot spawn shop. Um, the nice thing here is I put risers in specific to each monster. So I don't know if you can see there, but each, each monster is on a different height riser. The, the goal of which is to put them all at the very top so you're not, you're not trying to stick your fingers way down and dig around for, to pick up the guy. There's, there's symbols, it shows you very clearly where each one goes. They all kind of pop out um, into their own separate pieces. Um, there's, a, there's a few advantages to this. One is that these are really easy to, to 3D print. Um, and you don't you don't need um, you don't need to have an AMS in this case to do the color printing if you want to do a manual swap out it's easier when it's in the first couple of layers and then you just let it, the rest of it print um, but the idea here is you could swap this out with different symbols different monsters things like that this component um, is is designed so that with an expansion you could print like an additional row or two column or two and and you could move this into one of the expansion boxes and have it serve as your small monster mini uh, box. You make that box entirely for the small monster minis, and then what you would do is 3D print more uh, more to uh, terrain trays, and maybe you'd have more terrain in the core box, something like that. Um, I also did a lot of work to reduce uh, filament. So obviously, there's a huge environmental advantage to that. Um, printing less plastic is good. Um, it's also great because it makes it lighter and um, cheaper. And it's cheaper. I mean, it's a bit of work to, to in the design phase to try to kind of go through and, and do all of this. But I figure, you know, if this if I share this and it gets printed 200 times, um, that's 200 times whatever the amount of plastic is, right? That we're that we're not um, that we're not using up. So an hour of my time, for example, to to do a bit of extra work to try to get this as lean and mean as possible while retaining the the strength, I think is worth it. And then we'll get rid of these guys too. So there's the similar kind of uh, tray for the large monsters. Let's go to cards. I designed this tray so that it is uh, customizable. Each one of those, in, each one of these are an insert and so I can adjust how many cards can fit in each gap? Yep, yeah, I, I kind of made it so that you can, and you can use this for other games too, right? Because it's, it's pretty generic. Um, I made it so that you've got five millimeter increments. So what you do is you, you have to pull straight up on these and there's just a little tiny bit of pressure. These inserts pull out, or these dividers pull out. And then you can, you can stick them in wherever you need them. And then they pop right in and they, they don't fall out, right? So they, they're in there. Um, and what's nice is I also 3D printed, it might be hard to see, I don't know if I can pop it out. I pop it out a little bit. I also 3D printed uh, a, a ramped back for the for the inserts. The reason is you don't actually want to jam 
the cards into the tray such that there's no room. You need to be able to flip through them and um, you need to make sure for that purpose that there's kind of a spot in the back where you can you can have cards kind of leaning back Same. and, and yeah. then they'll be able to, to, to you know, lean forward and that kind of thing. This notch lets you easily grab the, the deck you're looking for. I'm noticing and appreciating that there's enough room here for all the cards to be sleeved. All the cards can be sleeved, yes, that is true. Um, everything that I've got is uh, prints so that you can use sleeved or unsleeved. This works kind of the same way, it's the same thing, so a lot. This is for uh, the, the smaller cards, but it's it's all the same dividers there. It's the same idea. Five, five millimeter increments, you customize the whole box however you want. So I've got two trays for the terrain. This is kind of a staging tray. It sits on top and it lets you kind of go through, find the stuff for the upcoming room, get it all ready to go on top here, or put this wherever you want. And then the main terrain tray is here. Uh, trying to minimize the filament use, but this is a, this holds all of the the game terrain. You can put this on the table or you can just leave it in the box. What I tend to do is just you know, maybe leave a, a few of the things in the box, like maybe the large minis, the terrain, and just have that off to the side and, you know, but you could, you could take it out, doesn't really matter. Here's the last piece. This brick is for things like uh, doors, uh, dead ends, which are here, uh, the small, small connector pieces. Um, and you know smaller hallways and things like that what i really need is an, uh, an ams so i can print the numbers um on the side because my intention is to print the um the tile numbers so if you need 30 or 31 or 32 you, you can kind of look down the side and see exactly where that is it really helps with the organization finding pieces quickly uh, you don't want the game to drag by hunting around for components this lid is not just a lid I'm going to bring back the uh, Overlord cards I talked about before, you know, the event deck or lieutenant cards or something in here, some search cards in there. But this becomes the dashboard basically for all your game time cards. So uh, with all of this stuff, it's really, really easy to get the game out to the table, playing. And then again, once the, once the session is done, let's say the Overlord is going to... Um, upgrade some of the cards in their Overlord deck. They would search through the market here, pick which cards they want to add to their deck. Let's say they want to buy a couple of cards. They add that into the market, or sorry, into their Overlord uh, stack, take their Overlord car cards, put them there. That saves the Overlord's um, state. And then for the players, again, you would take the player boards and open it up. You know, you might buy some additional equipment or things like that. All that stuff just goes back in the insert. Tokens go in, you know, showing how much health you have and all that kind of stuff. This card goes back and that is ready to save for your next session. I want to thank Bamboo again because I wouldn't have gone through the... I don't think I would have actually gone through with this without a bit of extra motivation. So thank you for, for that motivation. They, they are the... I mean, they are the only printer right now that I would recommend to anybody having, having, used, having used it and seeing great results, great speed, great reliability. It's all top notch. Thank you, Bamboo, also for stimulating Steve to do this because now I'll get him to do that for the rest of my collection of games <laughs> and make them more table friendly. <laughs> so I do plan to, um, I think I had enough fun doing this that I do plan to continue with this. I'm trying to figure out what makes the most sense I don't know if I need to start a Patreon or something. I'll figure something out. I also feel like I need some more printers because this particular insert uh, takes 17 hours of print time and takes uh, about $33 worth of uh, bamboo filament. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's what their bulk pricing. That is, um, it's, it's a good price on filament, but it, it does use kind of a roll and a half or so. Um, so, uh, more printers would help me produce these more quickly. Yeah, I encourage everybody, try it for yourself um, if you have access to a 3D printer. I had a lot of fun doing it, and um, yeah, looking forward to making more content like this. And also printing and designing for our own board game. Yes, we've got our own board game that we're working on, which is completely hush at the moment. Um, I also have a couple of entr other entries coming for this contest, one of which at least one of which will be a, a fully 3D printable board game design. 
I've also got some cool accessories uh, that I'll be showing, things I've, things I've printed, designed and printed. Um, so all of that's coming. But this was my, I wanted to get, you know, this has consumed me for a bit for the past week. I wanted to get this video done. So uh, good to get this out there. And um, thanks again.